So today what I'm going to go in detail is a macro. What is a macro? So before we actually look at what a ma ma macro is, we just want to first see where do we get macro functionality in Excel. Okay, so if you're in Excel, let me just go back to my home. You can actually go to, you, you, the first thing you need to add is to add sort of the developer tab. So you can see I don't see the developer tab. Uh, under the developer tab, that's where you get your macros. Or you can also come here on the search button and search for uh, record macro so that you can actually record a macro. Okay. Let's just go to the developer. Let's just add the developer tab. So you go to file and other file, you go to options. Then you want to customize the ribbon because you want to edit on the ribbon so that you can just access it there. Okay, customize ribbon. Okay, you can see here on my ribbon, I have developer here, it's unchecked. So sometimes you might come here and it's not even on this side. So what you would want to do is you just search it under all commands here. You just say all commands, then you can edit here. Okay, because it's already here, I can just click it and say okay. Once I edit, you can see I have now the developer tab here. So I can go to the developer tab and I can find record macro. But one very important thing before you start recording your macro, you would want to make sure that uh, the workbook is saved as a macro enabled workbook. So what a macro does is there is a special type of workbook that can house a macro because a normal Excel workbook cannot house a, a macro. So if your, your workbook is not saved as a macro enabled workbook, you can just go to file then save as okay i'm going to save it on my desktop in this folder save as okay here you can see mine is already the type is macro enabled workbook yours might not be macro enabled workbook so you just need to click here and it will be yours will be excel workbook you just need to change it to macro enabled workbook then you can click on save but because i've done that already there is no need for me to uh, to change here and save it so i'm going to cancel but if you are saving it as a macro enabled workbook for the first time it will just save at the same place with your normal excel document so both document will still be there for if you want to check the file extension, please refer to my other video on uh, how to show uh, file extensions in Windows to see how you can show the extension of this file so that you can easily just see the extension if it's XLSM. That's a macro enabled web workbook. It has an extension XLSM. This one, a normal Excel workbook, we have an extension .xlsx. Okay, so I will cancel because mine is already uh, saved as a macro enabled. I can start recording <clears throat> a macro. Okay, so what a macro does is that you can actually record certain things in, a, in steps so that instead of doing them manually next time, you can just actually replay that macro. So... Uh, let's go on record to just illustrate what I'm referring to. Okay. Okay. It will ask me the name. So it's critical to add a macro name here. And also you have to know that you can't add a name with a space. So for example, if I want to call my, uh, my macro, replay me. Okay. Or if I say, it will say that I cannot use this name because there is space here. 
but if I remove this place space then I can actually save it okay so my macro is called replay me okay it can show it, it shows here it's recording and also here it's showing that it's recording okay so what am I going to do okay I'm just going to do some few things quickly then uh, you can actually see how to use that macro now to redo the same things much faster okay what i'm going to do first is i'm going to just select here and maybe uh i'm maybe creating a report so i will just say monthly report for the department okay Just formatting my report. So maybe the department we have uh, department from up to department ten. Let me just make it big. Okay, so the cost we have, we have expenses here. Just put uh, a few expenses here. Then maybe after that, I will just want to have the total here. Okay. Then I would put my totals here, and I want to just put this one to maybe bold it. And maybe so. If I start, so in each month, I will want to have a template like this so maybe let me put a border outside here okay to just make it look nicer and to also illustrate my point much better so let's say salaries yeah say Okay, so that if I add anything for this department, if I add anything for that department, it automatically just adds here. Okay, but I don't want it to have these uh, numbers because these are for that particular month. So I want a blank template basically. Then I would want maybe, or let me just call this one will be for my total. And then yeah, maybe I can have percentage share.
Okay, so I have my percentage here. Yeah. Cool, so <clears throat> this is it. That's my template. Okay, cool. So I can just say because I'm done recording, I've recorded everything that I need to do. So I can, okay, before I stop my template, my macro, let me just delete this because I don't want it on a monthly basis. Okay, let me just delete it. This is how I want my template to look like before I add anything. Okay, so if I can stop this macro, okay, it's done recording. Okay, so now let's say come next month. So this was maybe this was June. Okay, now come Feb. Yes, uh, you could have just copied this. But here is just to illustrate the point of where you can use a macro, but there are many places where you cannot just simply copy. There are many instances where you cannot just simply copy a sheet and rename it and use it as a template. Uh, this is to just illustrate or demonstrate how a macro works. So if we go into February, we can actually just say, let me just insert a button so that I can be able to retrieve my macro. Okay, let me insert a shape. Let's insert this shape. Okay, so this is where we are going to just add that macro. So remember, I named my macro add me. Okay. Then let me assign a macro. So you would go to, you would right click and go to assign macro. Okay, replay me, or oh, it was actually replay me, not add me. Okay, but doesn't matter, it's just a name which is here. Okay, let's just say, okay. Okay, so next time I try to click on that one, it, you can see that it's changing now to a hand to show that I can click. Okay, let me play it. Okay, within a few seconds, I have added my new template here. So what it's doing is it's replaying everything that I was doing, but it's doing it much quicker because it has recorded it already in memory. So if I add, for example, I can add Feb, Feb, March, April. Okay. If you go to March and you want to add, you can just come here and click add. Then you can also add in April the template. You can also add the template in May. You can add template in June. So you can see that I've managed to add all these templates in a blink of an eye. Why? Because I've recorded a macro. So think about all the reports that you do on a monthly basis, all the routine tasks that you do on a monthly basis. Uh, for example, you would download a report and you need to clean it up. And after you've cleaned it up, you need to summarize it into a pivot table or summarize it in, in a certain way. You can actually do that using a macro. So know that there are macros out there, but obviously this macro is not fully dynamic. Uh, so you would want to now, once you have recorded it, you can see that after I've recorded it, I might actually want to edit certain things to say, okay, here yeah, I said department one, department two, department three, but I now know the names of the departments. I want to actually edit this macro and add the names of a department. Okay, so if you want to do that, you can go to developer. Now we are editing the macro we have recorded. So this is one way of uh, adding a macro. Now we are editing it. Developer. Then you can go to your Visual Basic. Okay. 
or you can just click shortcuts out F11. Okay, Visual Basic. So the new macro would have been added in modules under module one. Okay, let's go to module one. Okay, you can see this is the macro that have been recorded. Okay, so I'm not going to demonstrate on editing it in detail now because I know it might be confusing to just see a big macro like that. But I just want to show you if I want to rename the departments, for example. Okay, I just need to uh, check where I have added my department one, department two. Okay, so here's the department one. So you can actually change from department one and maybe say, uh, maybe it's not department, it's company one. So let's call it company one. Okay, let's just save it. And for now, let's close it and go to uh, June, July. Okay. Okay, let me just copy my shape. Okay, now it's company one, company two up to company ten. So you can see you can actually edit the macro that you would have recorded and now make it a bit more dynamic and also cater for those things which maybe you forgot whilst you were recording. Okay, but for you to be able to edit, you need to know how to use the VBA window. Okay, so now we are going to go to the VBA editor window, which we just opened now. We are now opening it and we are now going to learn a bit about it to see how we can actually uh, write a macro from scratch. Okay, we'll try, we'll start with a very, very simple macro. Okay, let me just open uh, sheet eight and uh, maybe let me call it Now let me just open uh, my Visual Basic Editor. Okay, so here I already have a module, but if I was starting from scratch, I would say, I would just right click anyway and insert, insert a module. I write a macro within a module, okay? Okay, this is my module too, okay. Now, what do I need to do now in modules now is that I need to now add subroutines. Okay, so uh, I'm going to first, before I explain it, let me just add a subroutine. Sub, you start with the keyword sub, then you add the name of a subroutine. So remember when we were recording a macro, I said that you can not uh, use a name with spaces. So uh, let me just say message box. So you cannot use the name message and space box okay. if you say no it's something is wrong here yeah? so i can say message box okay so automatically it will add your end sub so in between here between the sub and the name and uh, the end sub that's where you can actually put your subroutine what is it that you want this subroutine to do when you click it when you click play what does it want to what do you want it to do so currently i'm just clicking here and it's doing nothing actually okay so let's uh just say uh message box so if you wanted to send a message box you use the message box subroutine okay message box let me just bring it back so if you want to write a message box you can just use the keyword msg box okay then you say okay what is it you want to show in the message box you just say i want to show my name okay that's what i want to show in the message box so this is the text you want to show in a message box box so if i click it will show my name, okay? 
if you want to change the message box you can also then just choose you want to show it as a critical you want to show it as button default button one or explanation or information let me say information and say okay Yeah. or I can share, say I want to show with an exclamation mark or let me use critical okay then let's you can change the way you want to show your message box but okay so we can actually now go back to module one the one which we have recorded and just copy a certain thing from there and now use it in here so now it's no longer a message box let's call it test we want to call our subroutine test okay let's just go to module one okay let's go to where we started okay so here yeah, i will just copy the first part here up to here i'll explain to you what it is actually doing Okay, sorry, let me just open my and open module two again and I just paste it here. So what it's saying here is range b2 dot select. So Microsoft VB editor, what it does is it uses a dot operator. So it uses this dot to give the next instruction. So when you are writing a code, so often you are going to find out that it's going to have these dots and this will denote that you are now giving an instruction of the next step that need to be done. So here, for example, what it is doing is saying range. So range is a known uh, name within VB editor, uh, Visual Basic editor. So <coughs> the moment you say range and you give the range here, you are actually saying that this is, uh, you are actually instructing Excel that you want range B2. So this is B2. Okay. What do you need to do with that range? So you are instructing in that dot select. So you want to select that range. Okay. That is what is going to happen first. Okay. So let's just say uh, if you push F8 to just step into your macro f8 okay if i push f8 and go back to my workbook you can see it's selecting okay let me just replay it again let me put it side by side okay all right let's start again so I'm selecting E2, but if I step over this, if I when I'm here, I click F8 again, it should go and select my B2. Okay, let's do that. Okay, it selects B2 automatically. Then if I uh, click F8 again, it's going to put this formula. It reads it as a formula. Okay, F8. So it puts in the formula. You can see in the formula here. That's monthly report for the department. So that's how you instruct Excel to do. Here you are saying, okay, once you select B2, that becomes your active cell. Again, this is a defined word within uh, Visual Basic Editor. So you say active cell, which means the cell that you are selecting, dot formula, then you now give the formula equals this so this is the formula for that particular uh active cell or you can also use uh dot value because this is the value for that particular uh cell so you can actually use active cell dot value okay so let's just uh yeah i've done copy paste from what i recorded so this is another way you can do you can actually record a macro uh if you don't know how to do a certain thing you can actually quickly record it and copy it and use it in your bigger code you'll be uh, composing. Okay, so what we want to automate, okay, let me just continue things side by side.
what do we want to automate we want to actually write here uh january to december in this uh column here so we just want to write a macro that will write that for us okay so let's just delete this macro okay let me call it jan december okay to write january to december let me just close with open and closing parenthesis okay cool. now i'm going to say what do i want to inst instruct excel to do the first thing is that where do i want to write that okay i need to give a proper complete instruction for example how a dot operator works is that if you want somebody to switch on a television you do just don't tell them that switch on but you need to tell them what they need to switch on but a dot operator starts with the object so they are called objects okay so the object in my example will be the television so you would say television dot switch on which means that you are instructing that person to switch on the television okay television dot switch off you are instructing to switch it off so you need to name the object you want to work with once you name it then you say what is it that you want to do with that object okay so uh, in my Excel 101 lesson, I mentioned that we have a workbook window and the application window. So you need to understand what is it you are working with. In this case here, I want to write something in here. So that's inside my workbook window. So the object I'm working with is workbook. Okay. So I would also need to know which workbook or the name of the workbook I want to work with. But for now, because the workbook is open, I can just use uh, active workbook, okay? So active workbook. So Excel, even if I have 10 workbooks open, but the one which I am working in becomes the active workbook, okay? So active workbook, what do I want to do with it? Okay, if I push dot, you can see there are quite a number of options here you can say activate you can say active chat if there's an active chat i'm selecting or you can say active sheet there are quite a number of things that you can look up here and actually use them to once you are writing a uh a, your macro here okay but what i want to do with my active workbook is that i want to then select a worksheet okay so because I cannot just say active workbook, then I start writing in here. Because this is my workbook, but it has quite a number of sheets. So my macro needs to know which worksheet do I need to work with. Okay. So let me just uh, add the worksheet. Now that's the next thing. So it will go in steps. Okay. Worksheets. Okay. Here now it's asking me for the index of the worksheet. So this is the name of the worksheet. Okay, I want to work with sheet August. Okay, then I just put in quotes August. Okay. What do I want to do with it? Okay, once I'm in sheet August, I want to put in a1 i want to put the value january okay then i say dot uh now i'm giving next instruction so i'm starting with the uh highest level which is the workbook then in the workbook i go to my worksheet august in my workbook august i now need to go to a range okay so i go to range where i need to work with Okay, you need to work with A1. In A1, what do I need to do? Why, once in that range, what do I want to set? Okay, I want to set, I don't want to use, it's not really a formula. I can say formula, but it's not really a formula. I just want to put value January for now. Okay, then I can say dot value. 
okay i'm setting the value to equal to january okay i'm putting it in quotes because it's a text if it was a number i'll just put one okay so let's just play that okay here excel added uh january in here so let's just say Okay, so I need to just add the rest of the months. Okay, I'm just going to add the rest of the code. So here, what I this is the code I had. So I've just added for February in the A2, uh, A3. I'm adding for March and so on. Then if I can just play it. Okay, so it has added my code here. So I can actually now change my August if I just do find and replace control H. I can actually replace August with uh, July. Okay, then I can replace. and let's go to so you don't need to open uh the july workbook you can just i've just played it if i open july i should have my january to december in a1 to 8 12th of july okay let's go to july okay there is my january to december january just hidden okay there's my january to december so if i just create a new sheet here let me just call it uh, sheet 9. Okay, it's fine. Then let me just go back in August. Instead of using July here, let me just use uh, sheet 1. Sheet 9, sorry. Okay, then I re okay. Then if I play my code here, see that i have added uh january to december so i have effectively just automated this yes i have taken time to write this so code but once i oh, once i need to write january to december i just need to click a button and january to december appears so it it becomes now much more faster in the long run there are quite a number of things that you can actually do to automate your excel we are going to learn them including building the report so that uh you can actually set up how you want a report to be built a big report and how you want to summarize certain information and the moment you just uh paste your information in one of the worksheets then automatically a macro you can set it up to automatically sense that there is a change in the data tab once you change your data the report starts to uh refresh or you can quickly build your report and distributed you can even automate to uh, have an email sent whilst you are not even uh, on your computer so there are quite a number of things that you can do with a macro so this is just an introduction to a macro uh, so that you can actually just understand where you can use it okay the other thing that i just want to show you is also that uh, also on writing a macro but now we are not writing a macro only based on the workbook but we are also basing it on the application itself remember there's the application window and there's a workbook window so we want to actually use the application uh, window as well in writing our macro and to show you how the interaction between those two works okay i'm just going to paste the code i will I was using just now uh, on my other project okay cool so what this macro does is that it gets 
uh, your username or your username so if i can go here uh, and say file on my workbook uh, file and i want to go to account okay my username is clive mish okay my name and say name let's just close it okay so sometimes you want to design a you want to design a login form that will send so you have certain users which are whitelisted so you have maybe 10 users you know their usernames you want to whitelist them in your webbook so that if they log in using that computer or if they try to open using that particular computer their excel document will be automatically opened without asking for password you can actually use this subroutine to get the username so what it is doing here is saying okay uh dim username a string what i didn't do here i didn't uh declare any variables here this is basically just declaring a variable okay so here i would have used a variable but i didn't need to because all my variables which is being the month name are sort of static so once i write january i have written january okay but here i'm declaring a variable to say that uh this one is a string so that when i try to enter a username which is a number it's not going to be accepted because it's not a string it's not text okay yeah, I'm now saying, okay, string username, I'm now passing a value to my variable. Okay, I've declared my variable. Now I'm passing value to my variable. Here I'm saying application.username. So I'm starting from the application window because for me to be able to find or to see my username, I have to go to file. The moment, if you remember what I said in Excel 101 lesson one, I said that this part is the application window it's not we are now outside the workbook that's why we are here we are using application because we are now calling the application window we are now accessing the application window we have moved out of our workbook okay <clears throat> then what am i looking for i'm looking for account information which is that type of information i'm looking for is the username the user information then username it's called username in uh, macros in visual basic okay so application dot username that gives my username here so it should give me this name here clive mish if i click this subroutine then it says yeah i'm just now saying okay display it in a message box okay so here is just a string i am just passing okay it's nothing you don't have to worry about it. it's just a string it's a normal string just like how we passed here january i have passed this long uh string to say current logged in username is then it gives whoever whatever the username which it should give me this username okay let me just try to run this macro okay current logged in username is clive mish which is exactly this username if I am to send to someone else and they run this uh, macro, it's going to tell them their correct username according to their information. So if I have developed a login form, I can also develop login form in Visual Basic. I'm going to show you in uh, future lessons. So if I develop a, a login form and actually say that if the user is Clive Mishi, don't ask for password. But if it's not Clive Mishi, ask for password. It's going to, the moment I try to open this document, it's going to automatically log me in. But if I send it to someone else, it's going to ask them uh, a password, uh, which I would have given them. So this is quite a cool feature to just know. And it's quite cool to see how we can interact with the application uh, window whilst we are in a particular workbook. All right, uh, so the last thing I just want to show you today is to now say, okay, uh, here I've shown you how to pass information 
into a workbook. Okay, let me just go back to my workbook window. Okay, I'm in my workbook window. Now, we have passed in this inf information from a workbook. Okay, let me go to my August. Now, we want to grab this information. Okay, from here using a macro or to retrieve this information using a macro. It's going to come in handy when you have data in sheet 9. You want to grab it into your macro, summarize it within a macro, and pass it on as summarized data in your reporting tab. So you would need to know how to access and retrieve or access and get the data from a worksheet. Okay, so uh, I'm just going to write a small subroutine here. Okay, I'm going to call it get data. Okay. So my sub get data, what it's doing is okay. Um let me just What I'm doing here is I have declared my variable here. I have declared my variable as a string. So this is just basically the type of my data. Because my January, I know it's text, so it's string. So dim a as string. All right. So I have declared it that it's a string. Okay. Then here I said, okay, a, I'm now passing value to a. I'm saying A is equals to active workbook. Okay. I'm saying I'm accessing the workbook I'm currently opening. Okay. So this is the active workbook I'm opening. Okay. Which worksheet? Because we have quite a number of worksheets. Okay. Worksheet August. In worksheet August. So go to worksheet August. That's the next step. Then dot range. This is the range I'm working with. Range A1. Okay. Go to range A1. Dot value. So I'm saying get the value from there. Okay. So I'm getting the value from that particular workbook. Then I just put it in a message box here. So let's try that. Okay. It shows January. Okay. If I can say uh, A7. Okay. A7 should give us July. Okay. July. Okay. So it's uh, giving us the values. So uh, also what I can do is I can actually loop through my data. But uh, this is more advanced uh, macro. So I can loop through my data to say, okay, give me the first value, then the next value, then the next value, then the next value, then the next value. So I can, uh, I will show, I will demonstrate that when we do loops, so they are called loops, where you look, loop through uh, your data and say you get this data, then whilst your cells are not empty, give me the next, give me the next until it finds a next cell and it stops. So watch out this space. If you do like this video, please like the, uh, uh, hit the like button at the bottom. And also don't forget to subscribe to our channel if you want to be notified also uh, when we upload a new video hit the notifications button we are going to be uploading more videos and more on this topic on learning how to automate Excel next time we are going to briefly look at how to do a power query and also how to do a power pivot okay thank you for watching guys enjoy bye bye